Welcome to the Activated Storyteller's 31st podcast, February 1st, 2007. This week's story is Pecos Bill, an American tall tale. Hi, I'm Dennis. Hi, I'm Kimberly. And I'm Zephyr. And together we are... The Activated Storytellers. And we're here to activate you. This week we are podcasting from... Texas. We've been driving. It's been taking us about a week to drive across Texas. We have stopped a little bit, but Texas is so big. How big is it? It's so big it ought to be a country. A small one, perhaps, but yes, a country. You know, the what's the old saying? The sun is risen, the sun is set, and we ain't out of Texas yet. Ain't it the truth? Oh, it takes a long time to drive across Texas. We took I-20, uh, came down through Pecos, and then stopped in Abilene for a little while. Went on to Dallas-Fort Worth area where we met up with some online friends, people we've only known from online, got to actually meet them in person, and then on down to Houston and uh, kept on driving and driving and driving. And I was sewing the whole way. We are putting a show together, uh, Shakespeare Shazam. It requires about 28 characters in uh, Elizabethan costume. So as we're driving, I've got the inverter running, and I am sewing Shakespeare costumes. Yes, Texas, it it is a huge state, but it's also a very varied state. It actually has some shoreline property. We spent a week by the uh, Gulf, not well, three years ago. And it has some wooded areas, but there's so much of it that's just desert. Yeah, lots and lots of space in between those cities. Um, When we were in Dallas-Fort Worth area, I mentioned we did get to see some of our online friends. These are people that we know from a group called FOTR, Families on the Road. There are about a 1,000 people plus on this group that we are in, uh, Families on the Road, and uh, actually I run the website for it as well. It's uh, familiesontherobe.com. And, you know, when we started this, we were basically uh, pretty much pioneers. We did not know that there were other families who were traveling full-time or who were interested in traveling full-time uh, when we started way back when. Yes, and a lot of full-time road people use Texas as their base of operations. Right, and that's because... Um, for one thing, it's just pretty easy to set up residency there, and also the homeschooling laws are really pretty easy to get along with in Texas. So a lot of people choose that state. When we started doing this, though, it was way back when before we had computers and Internet, before we had cell phones, we would stop and make our calls at pay phones, which now you can't find anymore. And when we started doing it, people thought we were crazy. Now people think we're cool. When they hear that, they think, oh, that's cool. But back then, people thought you were nuts. Well, there are still some out there that think we're rather nuts. and uh, But, you know, it has become much, much easier to travel, to do business on the road. Um, and, you know, people are deciding to do this because, well, for one reason, a lot of people are on the road with um, their jobs. There are people who are nurses who are on the road and they go and stay maybe three months in a location and then move on. Uh, construction workers are doing this. People who are running businesses from the internet are have decided that they can do this from anywhere and so they've taken their business on the road yes we spent the day yesterday with an interesting yesterday being sunday as we speak with a, an interesting family in the houston area and the mother and the two kids came to see a couple of our shows in new jersey i guess last year yes it was probably october a year or two ago because we yeah about a year ago in october because they lived out there at that time in new jersey and now they're living in texas as they prepare to go on the road full time a lot of people don't just pick up their roots and take off the way we did they have to spend some time preparing for it well they have spent some time on the road um and what this is the free range family that we're talking about they have a website free range dot com i believe um but they have spent some time on the road about nine months they would do a tour but they got to figure out how to make a living as they're doing it and so that's one thing they're trying to do is uh, find temp jobs and um so they're in texas right now but they'll be out on the road by next year Yes, that, we are different from a lot of families who go on the road because we went on the road because of our job. And a lot of families, a lot of people who go on the road decide, well, they want to travel, and then they start thinking about how they can make it work, uh, how they can work at the same time. They have to go on the road in spite of their job rather than because of it. Yeah, but I think that all families that have decided that being together 
is the most important thing to them. And some of them, their jobs, their dad's jobs, or, you know, keeping them separated. And the family decides, this is just nuts. We don't ever see him. We want to go out with him and, and be on the road, too. So a whole bunch of, um, like I said, a 1,000 members on this list. And those are just the ones. And we've seen other families on the road that didn't even know about the list. So there are many, many families who are on the road, want to be on the road, uh, full time. Now we're talking about Texas. Uh, there's something called the escapees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, escapees. It's a retirement. A lot of retired folks are doing it. It's kind of a group for RVers. And that's based in Texas. Right, that's in Texas as well. Um, so people use that as a resource for when they want to go on the road too. And speaking of Texas, we mentioned that we were in Pecos. We didn't get to see Pecos Bill, though. I was kind of hoping we'd see him there. No, we did see the West of the Pecos Museum and the National Rodeo Hall of Fame because Pecos was the site of the very first rodeo in uh, 1883. It happened to be closed when we stopped by, but we did stop in the parking lot there and get some rehearsing done for our new show for Shakespeare Shazam. A lot of people wonder how we rehearse on the road. There's the secret. Uh, parking lots, uh, public parks... Yeah, you never know. And we do, we just have to take advantage of what we see when we see it and um, make it work. And so we got out our swords and we did our sword fighting right there and near the place where the first rodeo in the world ever happened. Well, most of the time when you have a theatrical production, you get to rehearse in, in the theater that you're going to be doing it in before you open it. But we don't exactly have that luxury, so we kind of have to make do. Yep, we do, but we pull it together. And like I said, too, we do things like sewing while we're driving with my sewing machine running full time. And so we are on to our story this week. It is Pecos Bill. Back in the days of the cattle drives, cowpokes used to tell tall tales to entertain themselves. And the tallest tales of all were about the tallest cowpoke of all. Pecos Bill. When Bill was just a baby, he was traveling across country with the rest of his family in a covered wagon. They crossed the Pecos River. He decided he wanted to do some fishing. Oh. So he threw out a string to try to snare a fish. But instead, it snagged on a log and pulled him out of the wagon. And he got left behind. Well, fortunately, he was rescued by a pack of wild coyotes. And they raised him as one of their own. Hey, it was fortunate because he could have been raised by a fish instead. So, Bill grew up with the coyotes and grew up thinking that he was a coyote. Although, he sometimes thought maybe he was a coyote instead. Of course, he wasn't called Bill at that time. He was just called Ow! which means something like leader of the pack. One day, he was out with the rest of the guys foraging for a tasty snack of gophers. <laughs> when along came a cow poke, the first human he'd ever seen. Well, howdy there, stranger. Uh, you talking to me? Reckon so. You look like the leader of the pack. Why are you uh, crawling around on all fours? Well, what else would I crawl on? My whiskers? Why don't you stand up and walk like a man? What's a man? A person who never asks for directions, like me. Hey, that sounds like me too. Yep. I reckon you're a... Man, too. Oh, that explains why I'm speaking this strange language all of a sudden. But, uh, wait, I I don't have colored fur like you. Them's called clothes, or as we call them, duds. Don't worry, we'll get you some. So, Bill said goodbye to his coyote friends. (laughs) And went to rejoin the human race. And he got himself a job as a cowpoke. Uh... No, Bill, you you don't really punch the cows. That's just an expression. Oh, uh, sorry. What do I do? Well, sir, you see that herd of cattle? Of course I've heard of cattle. Well, let's get busy and round them up. How do we do that? 
Why, by reading them um, poetry, of course. <clears throat> My love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Uh, they're just standing there. I know. Sometimes it just don't seem to get them a moving. Not even if you read them Shakespeare. I sure wish we could think of a better way to manage cattle. Hey, look out for that there rattlesnake. It's very Texas. What he meant, of course, was that the rattler was the biggest one ever. But it didn't worry Bill none. He just grabbed that rattler up by the tail and swung it around, and he was about to send it a flying when he got an idea. He tied it in a knot to make a loop. Then he slung that loop around the head of the head cow in the herd, and he could lead the leader where he wanted the other cows to follow. Well, I'll be a ward on a toad's back. I think you done solved our problem. And thus, Pecos Bill invented the lasso. Yeah, we might want to try something to use besides a snake, though. Why's that? Why snakes are dangerous to us humans. If you're gonna keep 'em around, why we'd have to tie 'em up with a rope or something. Pecos Bill got to be real well known as the best cow hand west of the Pecos, or. East of it, for that matter. One day, whoopee ki yay yay! There's a twister a coming. Oh goody! I've been wanting to play a game. No, not that kind of a twister. A a cyclone, a storm. You'd better grab your insurance policy and hold on tight. Bill had no insurance policy, but he did have two mighty. Very Texas hands. So he grabbed onto the tail end of that twister, and he pulled and he pulled until he straightened it out, and then he hurled it like a spear all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Well, score another one for Bill. Well, now naturally, a handsome feller like Bill caught the eye of the ladies, and before long. He met one he wanted to court. Well,、uh, why would we go to court? We're not even married yet. No, I mean he courted her. He made her acquaintance. He he dated her. Oh! He met her one day when he saw her riding down the river on the back of a huge catfish. Wow, she rides catfish better than anybody I ever saw.、Uh, howdy, miss. My name's Bill, Pecos Bill. I'm Sue. They call me Slewfooted Sue. Whatever that means. Well, Bill and Sue fell in love almost immediately, and decided they were going to get hitched and raise some youngins and maybe start a catfish rodeo. It didn't bother them at all that Bill and Sue were two things a lawyer might do. But now, Bill, before we get ourselves hitched, I want to ride that there horse of yours. Oh no, no, nobody can ride old Widowmaker but me. That's what you say, but I say no ride, no wedding. Oh boy. Okay, but be careful. Ah, piece of cake. So she thought, but when she climbed on his back, he bucked so hard and threw her so high that she bumped her head on the moon. Ouch! And then she fell back down, but because she was wearing a hooped skirt, she started a bouncing. And she bounced so high and so far away that she was never seen again. Now they say that after that, old Bill died of a broken heart, or some say it was gas from all those beans they had on the trail. In any case, he sort of faded into obscurity about the same time the big cattle drives ended. Quite a coincidence, eh? And that's the story of Pecos Bill.、He、even starts out with the family on the road. Yes, a family on the road in Texas, no less. Now, Pickles Bill is one of the many、uh, tall tale collections that、uh, revolve around a particular occupation. In、uh, the lumberjack trade, they tell the story of Paul Bunyan. And, yep, we've seen his statue. Yes, and in sailing, they tell the story of、uh, Old Stormalong. We have that story on the website. 
Yes, we do. In each case, the hero, the central character, is bigger than life physically and in other ways. And uh, we actually did a production once where we combined several of these characters into one character, one story. Yeah, I made it as if they were all one person, kind of combined all of them. You know, another story comes from Texas, Davy Crockett. And that's another one that we have available on our website and in a podcast as well. So if you haven't heard that one, go on back, check the podcast. By the way, speaking of podcasting, we are hoping to get some more iTunes reviews. So if you haven't had a chance to stop by iTunes and you enjoy the show or you just have a comment to make, um, please leave us a message on iTunes. We'd appreciate that. And next week, we will be bringing you a special report from New Orleans a year after Katrina. So we'll see you next week with a new story and some new information from somewhere on the road. See you later. Alligator. Ta-da. The Activated Storytellers perform at schools and libraries nationwide. On stage, we use American Sign Language, physical comedy, imaginative props, and a giant oversized book to bring the stories to life. For booking information, check our website at www.activated-storytellers.com where you can also find out when the Activated Storytellers will be performing near you. Read a story or order one of our audio CDs. Until next time.